Hello, I am Dr. Roger Elby. I am director of the Parkinson Disease and Movement Disorders Center at Southern Illinois University School of Medicine in Springfield, Illinois. And I have been actively researching topics in tremor and neuromuscular control for many years. In this presentation, I will discuss the various medications considered in the treatment of essential tremor. In talking about medications and their usefulness in treating essential tremor, we need to look for hard data and evidence of each drug's effectiveness. We cannot rely on anecdotes or reports from single patients. In this presentation, I base my comments on three evidence-based reviews focused on the treatment of essential tremor. I will concentrate on the generally accepted effectiveness of ET medications. The literature contains hundreds of papers dealing with the medical treatment of ET. Unfortunately, most of these are anecdotal reports, and most studies involve only small numbers of patients and examine the effect of treatment for only a few weeks, sometimes even less. Most people with ET have never seen a physician for their tremor, and the patients tracked in the published studies may not be representative of the general ET population. Propranolol and primidone are the only drugs with a full evidence-based recommendation for the treatment of essential tremor. Patients may be more familiar with them under their marketed brand names of Enderol and Mycelene. Their benefit in ET was discovered serendipitously, or basically by accident. No other drug has been found to be more effective than these two medications. Note that the FDA has not formally approved primidone for the treatment of ET, so its use is off-label. Alprazolam, atenolol, gabapentin, sotalol, and topiramate have been shown to be probably effective for essential tremor. The evidence is just not quite as strong as it is for enderol and mycelene. None of these drugs is more effective than propranolol or primidone. Curiously, Gabapentin has been shown to be ineffective when used with other medications for ET, but was found in one study to be effective when it was used by itself as the only treatment medication. The next level of recommendation is for drugs that may possibly be effective in treating ET. These drugs include botulinum toxin A, clonazepam, natalol, and nimodipine. This slide shows a large number of medications with evidence for being ineffective. They are not recommended for use in treating essential tremor. Interestingly, all of these drugs were initially observed anecdotally to be beneficial. Many published studies found a significant placebo effect in ET, in which people taking a sugar pill show some improvement. This shows the importance of using randomized controlled trials to demonstrate the true effectiveness of a medication. Here is even a longer list of medications that have been considered in the treatment of essential tremor, but have little evidence or conflicting evidence of their effectiveness. None of these medications can be recommended for ET. This table shows average dosage and improvement in symptoms commonly seen for some of the more well-known medications. You can see that only propranolol and primidone typically achieve more than a 50% improvement, which is usually taken as the benchmark for significant effectiveness in anything other than very mild tremor. Even though some patients showed dramatic improvement in response to these two drugs in the controlled trials, the effectiveness usually dropped off gradually over time. Studies of head and voice tremor are limited, and no medication has consistent evidence of efficacy including propranolol, primidone, and botulinum toxin. Even the treatment of upper limb tremor is inadequate in approximately half of all patients treated, and one-third of patients treated eventually stop their medications. The lack of success in finding a more effective drug has been disheartening for patients and researchers alike. This slide lists some of the reasons for this lack of success. It is likely that a significant number of patients enrolled in studies do not have ET due to misdiagnosis. It is also likely that ET, as presently defined, is a heterogeneous disorder. In other words, it may have several different underlying physical or biological causes. Comorbidity is a term used to describe patients with two or more medical conditions that are unrelated. 
So the presence of conditions such as fibromyalgia, anxiety, depression, and Alzheimer or other medical problems could confuse the response of ET to medications. Comorbidities are more common in older patients who are also more likely to have ET of sufficient severity to seek medical attention. So comorbidities is a big problem in studies of ET. The most important reason is our limited understanding of the pathophysiology of ET. We do not know the fundamental defect or defects that lead to widespread neuronal oscillation in ET. So drug treatment has not yet been based on a sound pathophysiologic rationale that targets specific processes in the brain leading to tremor. I appreciate the opportunity to share this information with you, and I hope you will take advantage of the other topics in our series of recordings. Thank you for watching.